guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be making the moulds for the side skirts. Uh, so we're going to start off. I've been sanding them off video, just uh, 400 grit sandpaper, just to try and get them nice and flat. We're going to be mounting them on these boards. I've got one for each skirt. There, ones over there. So we'll get them mounted on here. We'll get the fillet and wax around about the gap, and then we'll start looking at how we're going to actually make the mould. I think we're going to make a two piece mould, so mould it all the way over to here, stop it and then have another mould for this piece, or another section of the mould for this piece, so that when we actually come to make it, I can take this piece off and that will let this come out easier. Well that makes sense, uh, it doesn't quite make sense to me yet, but I'm sure once we start it will. So yeah, that's what we're going to do, I'm going to try and make this full episode about making the mould rather than doing two or three episodes, because we've seen it before anyway. So yeah. Stay tuned. So that's me going around both of them with a the fillet and wax. Just creating that little radius to let everything release a bit easier. Now we're going to use a hot glue gun and some of this corrugated plastic just to make a kind of vertical flange up along there along the sides. And it shouldn't take too long. I've only got six pieces so I'm hoping that's going to be enough to do both of them. Need to be quite strong as well, so I might need to reinforce them with something else. I'll do that next, and then it's the layers of wax, maybe five or six layers of wax, and a couple layers of PVA release. New day guys and we're back at it. So the PBA last night, I don't know if you've noticed from the time lapse, but it took me about 40 minutes to just evenly go over it and over it and over it. It kept doing that fish eye thing again. It's dried much better than what it was, but you can still see there's little kind of areas where I'm not quite sure if it's on there or not. I actually covered these boards better. Um, so we're just gonna roll with it. Um, today's plan is to put the two layers of gel coat on and one layer of fiberglass matting. Leave that for a day and then just continue doing a little bit every day. So yeah, here we go.
this I've started to say it when I was using it would be mixed up too much. It's absolutely roasting. There was a bit of smoke coming off it before I could grab the camera. You see it's starting to separate from the plastic of the tub. Melting the plastic but let's see the heat of it. Ooh. Yep. Fun stuff. Let's see if my temperature gauge is counting about somewhere. Typical, you can't find it when you're looking for it. There we go. Hundred and twenty one degrees. Yeah. Burning stuff. I've been through heartaches, I've been to heaven. I've done my best and my worst, learned my lessons. No matter how hard my life would treat me, I'd always get right back up. So I came out last night, the uh, camera was kind of playing up a little bit, so I never recorded it and it was just reinforcing the edges here. Just use some six mil chop strand, mix them with some resin and you can get a nice kind of little edge on it to make it easier when you're doing the rest of the matting. Unfortunately I ran out more or less and I had a big bucket of the stuff. I hadn't realised I'd ordered 13 mil, which I thought well that would be fine. but. It's on, it's horrible, it's absolutely horrible to work with compared to the, the smaller stuff. So I've done a little bit over to here, got fed up and ordered some more online so I'm not getting it for another day or two, so I haven't done this side. So I don't know what to do, um, I might carry on with this, I might sand this the rough spots back with the edges and things and just put another layer or two of matting on that and leave this one until I get more of the sick mill and just so I can do the edges because there is quite a lot of edges to try and get the matting round about and it's just easier when you're not trying to get into the tight edges. Um, so I'll maybe leave that one for a few days and just keep working on this one, see how it goes. I don't need no one to say you're complicated Cause I knew from the start this might be overrated Cause we're 
So I just trimmed these up. I was looking to find out how how thick the board was. It's hard to tell because all the different layers were sticking up. So if you can tell the the little back panel board's five mil. These are sitting just over seven mil. I was hoping to have the mould to be ten. So I've still got the other two more layers of the four hundred gram matting to put onto it. So that will take up to maybe about nine mil, and I think that'll that'll do these two moulds. Uh, I've run out of resin to do the other side, so I can't get them till the beginning of next week anyway. So I'll just crack on to the last two coats of 400 gram matting on these, and eventually they're kind of awkward. See, obviously the mould's going to be this side as well, flipped over. So I'm going to have to make a frame, timber frame or something that goes up, across, and down on both sides. So when I flip it over, it's kind of stable. So that will help strengthen it as well. So yeah, it will probably end up being about nine, nine mil thick. The the rear arches were slightly thicker because if you remember we put I think they're just over eleven mils because we put the two mil core mat through it. I decided not to do it with these just because of all the shapes and sizes. But I could have put a little bit on top and bottom. But I don't think it will need it at the time I build the frame. So yeah, a couple more coats and then next week we'll do the other side and that'll be these done.
So off camera, I have put four layers of 400 gram matting on this and a two mil layer of core matting. So that didn't take too long, maybe two hours to do those five layers. And we'll do these ones next. I'll record this for you. Just blast it out quickly, let it dry overnight, and then wait on more materials coming. And the buzz noise is, is I made a makeshift ventilator just to try and keep the place nice and breezy without having both doors open all the time. The air's coming in through that window and it's sucked out there, which is nice. Okay, back to it.
Okay, so that's the other side here had 10 layers, maybe a wee bit more than 10 layers on it. So it's time to trim them. And just because some's maybe leaked into the next, not the first layer, I'm just going to take it down another quarter of an inch, cut both of them. And before I separate them, I'm going to stick a couple of bolts. I was going to put bolts all the way along, but then I thought it might interfere if I ever do vacuum bagging. So I'm just going to put one in each corner just now, just so that it's kind of got you've got your locating areas. And further down the line, I can always add more or I can just use clamps to clamp them together. I've not decided that yet. So, yeah, it's night time, it's wet outside, so I'm going to have to cut these in here. It's going to be a bit dusty. I'll just put my respirator on and everything will just get covered in dust. So, yeah, here we go. So 45 minutes later of sand and cutting, it's turned out pretty nice. This is a nice defined line where the two gel coats meet and hopefully they break apart easy. You can see it's some parts are starting to, maybe not so much in this one, you can see a little bit there, it's starting to come away from the board. So that's promising. Um, the bit I'm worried about is where the two, two parts meet. So let's get cracked on.
Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super chuffed with that. Right at the start, I have my worries. Just all the little corners and recesses with different issues, but perfect. Right, let's try this one. Hopefully, it's the same. One my hope. I was worried about the panel took a reaction, but Well guys, there you have it. I'll show you this one first. This one is absolutely perfect. These little grey bits are just a bit of primer that's stuck from the original part. You'll clean off just fine along with all the fillet and wax that come off. And even the surface once we clean the PVA off will be pretty good. Because the parts we're going to make, uh, either out of carbon fibre or fibreglass, depends, maybe do fibreglass ones first. They all get sanded and prepped anyway, so the surface is excellent for what we need it for. We could sand and polish it as well, just to make it even better, but the way it is, I think it's pretty good. Give it a little bit of cleaning up before we make any parts from it. This one here, a little bit chipped off, very minute. That's easy, I'll chip off the grey primer for the part and then we can just put a little bit of gel coat in there. A couple of little bits along this edge. But apart from that, definitely calling this a win. Lots of hours spent, lots of money in resins. I mean, you can see all those tins here, that's probably a third of what we used, plus all the, the rolls of matting and stuff. But we're going to have some unique parts here. So yeah, sides done, rears done, and it's just these ones to go. I'll get cracked on with them in the coming weeks, and I think there'll be a three-part mould. Cracked on with them. Hopefully take us maybe another month, maybe, to get those done. And after that, it's engine time, and I'm not doing any more body work for months to get this engine in. All right, till next time, guys. Thank you for watching. <laughs>